Hello, Honors Biology students. Today, I'm going to go over how to do numbers 1 and 5 in your dihybrid cross practice. Um, I know these can be a little bit tricky, so I want to walk through all the steps to actually do them. I'm going to show you how to do dihybrid crosses in two ways. Number 1 shows you, shows you the long way, and number 5 shows you the shorter way. So let's start with number 1. Number 1 says, in mice, the ability to run normally is a dominant trait. Mice with this trait are called running mice which is uh, represented with a capital R. The recessive trait causes mice to run in circles only. Mice with this trait are called waltzing mice, with the lowercase r. Hair color is also inherited in mice. Black hair, capital B, is dominant over brown hair, which is lowercase b. So my example here is that, um, for number one, it says cross a heterozygous running heterozygous black mouse with a homozygous running homozygous black mouse. So if I use my letters, heterozygous for running would mean we have two different letters. So we have the big R, little r, and they are also heterozygous for being black in hair color. So again, I'm going to use the big B, little b. So my first parent would be big R, little r, big B, little b. My second parent is homozygous running, homozygous black. Homozygous means the same, so we're going to use the same letters for running. Um, running is the dominant trait, so we're going to use capital R, capital R, two of the same letters. And again, homozygous black, black is the dominant trait, so capital B, capital B. So my two parents are capital R, lowercase r, capital B, lowercase b, and capital R, capital R, capital B, capital B. Again, these are from the same, uh, from the problem we just did on the last slide. Right now we're going to focus on the first parent, capital R, lowercase r, capital B, lowercase b. So we need to show the law of segregation here. So this is where our traits assort independently into gametes. So it doesn't matter if I have a capital R in my gamete, that doesn't mean I have to have a capital B or a capital or a lowercase b. It's independent of each other. They're um, randomly segregated. So I'm going to show how to figure out what's going to go into our gametes. So this is like meiosis that we did last week. Here we're starting with four genes. If four genes is my diploid number, we want to end up with two genes, my haploid number, so half. So we need to come up with combinations of two letters that's going to complete all of the combinations possible here. So there's two ways to do this, and I'm going to show you both ways. First way is through distribution. So I have my gamete here. It's the same thing I have from up here. I put it down here. And we're going to distribute just like you do in algebra. So my first letter R, I'm going to distribute with my capital B. So distribute here. So that gives me my first gamete. So capital R, capital B. I'm going to distribute this capital R again to my lowercase b, which will give me my second gamete. So I've distributed that capital R to both the b, big B, and the little b. Now I've got to do the same thing, but with my little r. So I'm going to do it again here. Little r, I'm going to distribute to the big B. which will give me my third gamete, little r, distribute to my little b, which will give you my fourth gamete. So I'm going to have a total of four possible combinations with two genes in each, one of my running or waltzing and one of my brown or black in each gamete that we pass on. However, there's a second way to do this, and I think it's easier. So this way, we're going to use like a fake Punnett square. Um, so in this way, we set up our Punnett square with the four boxes. And I put my two options, so my running or waltzing genotype and my black or brown genotype across the side. And then I cross just like I do with a Punnett square. So the first one would be capital R, lowercase, or uppercase B. Second one, capital R, lowercase B. Lowercase R, uppercase B and lowercase r, lowercase b. 
So if you compare these guys over here to these guys over here, it's the same four. So you can use either method to figure those out. I need to do that again with my second parent. So this one I'm going to focus on the capital R, capital R, capital B, capital B. So if I use the distribution method again, just like I did last time, we're going to start with our first uppercase R, and we're going to distribute that to the first uppercase B, which gives me my first option of gamete. Then I'll do that again with my second uppercase B. And then I will do my second letter R, and I will distribute the same way here. This guy is distributed here, and this guy is distributed here. So you'll notice, even though we did distribution like this, um, they're all the same type of gamete because we only had two types of letters. They were all capital letters. Again, I can use the Punnett square, the fake Punnett square way, where I put my R's for running and waltzing on top, my B's for black and brown on the side, and cross just like I would with a regular Punnett square. And those gives me my gamete options. So the same for no matter which way you can or determine your gametes. So now we've got our parents. We've figured out our gametes from the last two slides. So these were all on the top. These are all of my gamete options from parent number one. And along the side, these are all my gamete options from parent number two. So what I'm going to do now is cross just like I did with my regular Punnett square. So I'm going to bring down letters and I'm going to bring them over. Instead of just one letter though, this time we have two. So we're going to group all of the same letters together. So all of the R's are going to come first, all of the B's will come second. So if we do this, you'll notice I brought down the big R from the top parent, brought over the big R from the small parent, brought down the big B from the top parent, over the big B from the side parent. If I do that all the way down the same the row, I get the same thing. Now if I move over to the second column, again I'm going to bring all the R's down first and then all the B's down second. So here, big R from top parent, big R from side parent, B's from the top and B's from the side. Again, conventionally we usually put the big capital letter first, so that's what I did here. Again, I'll do that all the way down the row. Third row, bring down and over the R's, bring down and over the B's. Same thing going all the way down. And last row, down and over the R's, then down and over the letter B. Okay. So I've filled in my Punnett square. At this point, I want to figure out my phenotypes. So my first phenotype that it wants me to look for are mice that are running and black. Running was my dominant trait, so I'm going to look for any option of my offspring, so anything in the Punnett square that has the dominant trait expressed, so capital R. So if I take a really close look, I notice that every single one of my traits, or of my options, my offspring here, all of them have a capital R. Capital R, capital R, capital R, capital R. Not a single one has a lowercase r, um, two lowercase r's. All of these have at least one. So that means that in every single one of my offspring, we're going to have the dominant trait for the running gene expressed. So all of my mouse mice produced are going to be running. It also wants me to look for black. So again, black was my dominant trait, which means that I can either be homozygous dominant or heterozygous, and I will express the black hair color trait. So again, if I look over here, every single one of my little dudes that I have produced, my little mice, are going to have the at least one of the uppercase letter Bs. So because of that, 
all of my mice are also going to be black. So out of my 16 mice, 16 of them are going to be both running and black. So 100% of my offspring will be running and they will also be black. That means that 0% of my offspring will be all of the rest of my options. So this is the long way to do my dihybrid cross. The shorter way is a lot easier. So now we're going to look at a different gene or two different genes with pea plants. So my question for number five, this is number five on your practice, says, what are the genotypic and phenotypic ratios in the offspring resulting from a cross between two pea plants that are heterozygous for pod color and pod shape? So um, above this question, there's a table with a bunch of different traits, but these are the two traits we're looking for here. So pod shape, we're going to use the letter N, so we're either smooth or constricted, and pod color, we're going to use the letter G, so we're either green or yellow. It tells me that both parents are heterozygous for both traits. So we would have capital G, lowercase g, capital N, lowercase n for both parents. In our last example, we went through and we found all the gametes and then we crossed the gametes. But there's an easier way. It just is going to involve a little bit of math. So to do it this way, we're going to separate the traits and look at each trait on its own. So the first one I'm going to do is pod color. So pod color was your G's. So for my first parent, I had capital G, lowercase g. And my second parent, I also had capital G and lowercase g. So I'm going to set up just a normal four square Punnett square and cross them like I normally do, which gives me these options. And I'm going to do the same thing for pod shape. Both of my parents were heterozygous for my pod shape trait. So capital N, lowercase n on both sides of my square, and I cross them. So here, nothing crazy new. So if I take those same Punnett squares I just created, I want to know what the probability is that my offspring is going to be green and smooth. So I'm going to look over at my pod color first. So if I look at pod color, three of my offspring in pod color are going to be green. This guy will be green, this guy will be green, and this guy will be green. For pod shape, three of my offspring will be smooth. So if I've got that dominant trait, I'm going to be a smooth uh, pea pot. So three out of four are green, and three out of four are smooth. So I'm going to use those fractions, 3 out of 4 green, 3 out of 4 smooth. And then all I'm going to do is multiply across. So 3 times 3 gives me 9, and 4 times 4 gives me 16. So my fraction would be 9 over 16. If you remember from my large boxes, the long way, I had 16 boxes. So that's where that denominator of 16 comes from. If I actually did that, I would find that 9 of those 16 would be green and smooth. My next option wants to know how many are green and constricted. So again, over here, I have three that are green, like I had last time. But this time, only one of my pea pods are constricted, which is the little n, little n. So one out of four. Again, I multiply across. Three times one is three. 4 times 4 is 16, so my fraction is 3 out of 16. My next phenotype is yellow and smooth. The little g, little g under pod color will be yellow. Smooth, we know from the first problem, we're going to have 3 out of the 4. So 1 out of 4 are yellow, 3 out of 4 are smooth, multiply across, 1 times 3 is 3, 4 times 4 is 16. So 3 sixteenths. And lastly, yellow and constricted. One out of my four are yellow, that little g, little g, and one out of four are constricted, the little n, little n. So one times one is one, four times four is 16, so one out of 16. 